the first Spanish Republic was the short-lived political regime that existed in Spain between the Parliamentary Proclamation on 11 February 1873 and 29 December 1874 when General Arsenio Martinez Campos's pronunciamento marked the beginning of the Bourbon Restoration in Spain. The Republic's founding started with the abdication as king on February 10, 1873 of Amadio I, following the Hidalgo Affair when he had been required by the radical government to sign a decree against the artillery officers. The next day, February 11, the Republic was declared by a parliamentary majority made up of radicals, Republicans and Democrats. Overview, the constituent Cortes to write a federal constitution. The radicals preferred a unitary republic, with a much lesser role for the provinces, and once the Republic had been declared the two parties turned against each other. Initially. The radicals were largely driven from power, joining those who had already been driven out by the Revolution of 1868 or by the Carlist War. The first Republican attempt in the history of Spain was a short experience, characterized by profound political and social instability and violence. The Republic was governed by four distinct presidents a Euro Estranislo Figueras, Pio Margal, Nicola S. Omera Cubden, Emilio Castellera Euro until, only eleven months after its proclamation, General Manuel Parva led a coup d'état copyright at and established a unified republic dominated by Francisco Serrano. The period was marked by three simultaneous civil wars, the Third Carlist War, the Cantonal Revolution, the Petroleum Revolution in Alcoy, and by the Ten Years' War in Cuba. The gravest problems for the consolidation of the regime were the lack of true republicans, their division between Federalists and Unitarians, and their lack of popular support. Subversion in the army, a series of local cantonalist risings, instability in Barcelona, failed anti-Federalist coups, calls for revolution by the International Workingmen's Association, the lack of any broad political legitimacy, and personal infighting among the Republican leadership all further weakened the Republic. The Republic effectively ended on January 3, 1874, when the Captain General of Madrid, Manuel Parvela, pronounced against the Federalist government and called on all parties except Federalists and Carlists to form a national government. The monarchists and Republicans refused, leaving the unitary radicals and constitutionalists as the only group willing to govern. Again a narrow political base. General Francisco Serrano formed a new government and was appointed President of the Republic although it was a mere formality since the Cortes had been dissolved. Carlist forces managed to expand the territory under their control to the greatest extent in early 1874, though a series of defeats by the Republic's Northern Army in the second half of the year might have led to the end of the war had it not been for bad weather. However the other monarchists had taken the name of Alphonsists as supporters of Alfonso, the son of the former Queen Isabel, and were organized by Car Novas del Castillo. This period of the Republic lasted until Brigadier Martinez Campos pronounced for Alfonso in Segunto on December 29, 1874 and the rest of the army refused to act against him. The government collapsed, leading to the end of the Republic and the restoration of the Bourbon monarchy with the proclamation of Alfonso XII as king. Proclamation of the Republic King Amadio I abdicated from the Spanish throne on February 11, 1873. His decision was mainly due to the constant difficulties he had to face during his short tenure, as the Ten Years' War, the outbreak of the Third Carlist War, the opposition from Alfonsino monarchists, which hoped for the Bourbon restoration in the person of Alfonso, son of Isabella II, the many Republican insurrections and the division among his own supporters. The Spanish Cortes, which were assembled in a joint and permanent session of both the Congress of Deputies and the Senate, declared themselves the National Assembly while waiting for any final notice from the King. The overwhelming majority was with the monarchists from the two dynastic parties that had exercised the government until then, the Radical Party of Manuel Ruiz Zorilla and the Constitutional Party of Praxedes Mateo Sagasta. There also was a small Republican minority in the National Assembly ideologically divided between federalism and centralism. One of them, Federalist Parliamentarian Francisco Pi y Margal moved the following proposal, the National Assembly assumes powers and declares the Republic as the form of government, leaving its organization to the constituent Cortes. In his speech for the proposal, 
Pi y Marga a Euro himself a Federalista Euro renounced for the moment to establish a federal republic, hoping there would be assembled constituent Cortes to decide over the issue, and announced his acceptance of any other democratic decision. Then another Republican, Emilio Kastler, took the floor and said, after Kastler's powerful speech, amidst passionate applause, the Republic was declared with a resignation of the monarchists, with 258 votes in favor and only 32 against, the National Assembly assumes all powers and declares the Republic as the form of government of Spain, leaving its organization to the constituent Cortes. An executive power shall be elected directly by the Cortes, and it shall be responsible to the same. In the same session, the first government of the Republic was elected. Federal Republican Estenas Figueres was elected the first president of the executive power, an office incorporating the heads of state and government. No president of the Republic was ever elected, as the constitution creating such office was never enacted. In his speech, Figueres said that the Republic was like a rainbow of peace and harmony of all Spaniards of goodwill. The passage of these resolutions surprised and stunned most Spaniards, as the recently elected Cortes had a wide majority of monarchists. Ruiz Zorrilla spoke in these terms, I protest and will keep doing so, even if I'm left on my own, against those representatives that having come to the Cortes as constitutional monarchists feel themselves authorized to make the decision to turn the nation from monarchist to republican overnight. For most monarchists, though, the impossibility of restoring Isabella to his queen, and the youth of the future Alfonso XII made the Republic the only, though transitory, viable course of action, particularly given the inevitable failure that awaited it. Equals Fica as government equals, the first government of the Republic was formed of federalists and progressives who had been ministers during the monarchy. Four ministers, in particular, had served with King Amadio, Ashigare, Becerra, Fernandez de Carcuda Doba and Barenga. At the beginning, they were plagued by a terrible economic situation, with a 546 M peseta budgetary deficit, 153 M in debts requiring immediate payment and only 32 M available to fulfill them. The artillery corps had been dissolved in the most virulent moment of the Carlist and Cuban wars, for which there were not enough soldiers or armament, nor money to feed or purchase them. Besides, Spain was going through a deep economic crisis matching the Panic of 1873 and which was exacerbated by the political instability. In previous years, unemployment had risen steeply amongst field and industrial workers, and proletarian organizations responded with strikes, demonstrations, protest rallies and the occupation of abandoned lands. On February 23 the just-elected Speaker of the National Assembly, Radical Cristino Marcos, plotted a failed coup d'état in which the Civil Guard occupied the Ministry of Governance and the National Militia surrounded the Congress of Deputies, in order to establish an unitary republic. This prompted the first remodeling of the government in which the progressives were ousted and replaced with federalists. Twelve days after the establishment of the republic, compulsory military service was removed and voluntary service set up with a daily salary of one peseta and one crust of bread. A Republican Volunteers Corps was also established with an enlistment salary of 50 pesetas and a daily salary of 2 pesetas and 1 crust of bread. The second Figueres government had to face the attempt of proclamation of the Estoc Catala inside the Spanish Federal Republic on March 9 which was overcome by a series of telegraphic contacts between the government and the Catalan leaders. On April 23 a new coup attempt was set in motion. This time by a collusion of Alfonsino monarchists, members of the old liberal union and monarchic sectors of the army. But failed when several units refrained from supporting it at the last hour. Francisco Pi y Margal is usually considered the heart of this government, which had to face several problems already endemic to the republic, such as the Third Carlist War, separatist insurrections, military indiscipline, monarchic plots, etc. His government dissolved the National Assembly and summoned constituent Cortes for May 1. On April 23 Cristino Martos, Speaker of the Old National Assembly, attempted a new coup, now supported by the civil governor of Madrid, a battalion of militiamen took positions along the Paseo del Prado, and 4,000 more perfectly armed volunteers gathered near Independence Square under the pretext of passing review. Having heard from the plot, 
Pyamagal mobilized the civil guard. For his part, after the Minister of War appointed Balteza Hidalgo as the new Captain General for Madrid, he ordered Brigadier Camona and a battalion of infantry and various artillery and cavalry units, to march on the militiamen. The coup d'état copyright tat failed as soon as it started, and the government dissolved the military units participating in the permanent committee of the assembly. The writs were issued for constituent Cortes elections on May 10 which resulted 343 seats for federal Republicans and 31 for the rest of the political forces. The elections themselves developed in a quite unorthodox environment, and the resulting representation was ridiculous, as most factions in Spain did not participate, the Carlists were still waging war against the Republic, while the Alfonsino monarchists of Antonio Carnovas del Castillo, the Unitary Republicans and even the incipient workers' organization close to the First International all called for abstention. The result was clearly favorable to the Federal Republicans, which captured 343 of the 371 seats, but turnout was probably the lowest in Spanish history, with about 28% in Catalonia and 25% in Madrid. The Federal Republic on June 1, 1873 the first session of the Constituent Cortes was opened and the presentation of resolutions began. The first one was debated on 7 June, written by seven representatives, first article. The form of government of the Spanish nation is the Democratic Federal Republic. The President, having carried out the Cortes regulations for the definite approval of proposal of law, arranged to hold a nominal vote the next day. The resolution was passed June 8 by a favorable vote of 219 representatives and only two against, and the Federal Republic was thus declared. Most of the Federalists in Parliament supported a Swiss-like confederative model, with regions directly forming independent cantons. Spanish writer Benito Par copyright Res Gould Cube des, aged 21 at the time, wrote about the parliamentary atmosphere of the First Republic. The situation reached such levels of surrealism that, while presiding over a cabinet session, Esten slow Figueres yelled, Gentlemen, I can't stand this any more. I am going to be frank with you, I'm fed up with all of us. So fed up that on June 10 he left his resignation letter in his office, went for a walk through the Parc del Pion Retiro and, without telling anyone, boarded the first train departing from the Atoka station. He would only step down upon arriving in Paris. The government of Pi I Muggle. After Figueres' flight to France, the power vacuum created was tempting General Manuel Sodas into starting a pronunciamiento when a civil guard colonel, Joseph Copyright de la Gossia, showed up at Congress and declared that nobody would leave until a new president was elected. Figueres' fellow Federalist and government minister Francisco Pi Y Muggle was elected on June 11 but on his speech to the assembly he declared he was at a complete loss and without a program. The main efforts of the new government focused on the drafting of the new constitution and some social character-related bills, apportionment of disamortized lands among lessees, settlers and apaceros. Re-establishment of the regular army, with mandatory conscription. Separation of church and state which had been deeply intertwined under Ferdinand VII and only slightly separated by Isabella II. Abolition of slavery throughout the nation. Though the 1812 Cardis constitution had already taken some steps on the issue, the colonies remained opposed to the move from mainland Spain. Also, plans were made to limit child labor. Establishment of a system ensuring free and compulsory education. Legalization of the right of syndication creation of mixed workers' managers' juries and establishment of the eight hours workday. On June 16 a 25-member committee was set up by the Cortes to study the draft constitution of the Federal Republic of Spain, the redaction of which is mainly attributed to Emilio Castler, with debate starting the following day. On June 28 Pai Margal renewed the composition of his government, but due to the slow pace of the constitutional debates in the Cortes, Events came crashing down on the government at a stunning pace. On June 30 the City Council of Seville passed a motion declaring the town a social republic, and the next day many Federalist deputies left the Cortes in protest. About a week later, on July 9 Alcoy followed suit, in the midst of a wave of murders sparked by a revolutionary strike directed by local leaders of the First International. 
it was just the beginning, shortly after, the cantonal revolution swept across Spain with strikes, murders of officers by soldiers, lynching of city mayors and over a hundred casualties. The Federalist sentiment did not give rise to autonomous states as intended but into a constellation of independent cantons instead. Uprisings were daily news in the southeastern area of Levante and Andalusia. Some cantons were provincial in nature, like Valencia or Mar Laga, but most comprised just a city and its surroundings, like the more localized cantons of Alcoy, Cartagena, Seville, California, Diz, Armanza, Torrevieja, Castella Cuden, Granada, Salamanca, Baila Copyright N, and Ajar, Tarifa, and Algeciras. Even smaller were the village based cantons of Camua plus or minus as and Umila. The latter is said to have issued a manifesto stating, La nacia cubed en humilana de si viver en paz con todas las naciones vecinas y, sober todo, con la nacia cubed en marciana, su vecina. Piro si la nacia cubed en marciana, su vecina, se atreva desconocer su autonoma y a traspesa sus fronteras, humila se defendera, como los ha copyright rose del dos de mayo. Y triunfa en la demanda, resuelta completa mentalga, en sus justicimos desquites, hasta Mercia, y no dija en Mercia Pedra sober Pedra. The Umulan nation wishes to live in peace with all nearby nations, and particularly with the nation of Mercia, her neighbor. But should the nation of Mercia dare not to recognize its autonomy and violate its borders, Umula will fight back like the heroes of May 2nd, and shall be victorious in her demands ready to arrive at Mercia itself and leave no wall higher than the next. There is, however, no record of such a manifesto, nor of any similar declaration, in the municipal archives. And the proceedings of the time seem to be within normality. This has motivated several historians to deny the authenticity of the manifesto and even the very existence of the Umila Canton, stating that its invention was merely a form of anti-republican propaganda. The most active a Euro, and known a Euro of the cantons was that of Cartagena, born on July 12 at the city naval base under the inspiration of the Federalist congressman Antonio Gar Lvez Arc, known as Antoinette. The Cartagena would live six months of constant wars, and even minted its own currency, the Duro Cantonal. The first deed of the Cartaginan cantonalists was the capture of the St. Julian Castle, which motivated a strange telegram sent by the city's captain general to the minister of the navy, St. Julian Castle shows Turkish flag. Such Turkish flag was in fact the cantonal flag, the first red flag in Spanish history. Garn Lvez's passionate speeches allowed him to gain control of the navy ships docked in the city, which at that time were among the best in the Spanish navy. Under his command, the fleet wreaked havoc on the nearby Mediterranean shore, causing the Madrid government to declare him a pirate and set a bounty on his head. Back on land, he led an expedition towards Madrid that was defeated at Chinchilla. Two cantonal frigates, the Armansa and the Vitoria, set sail towards a foreign power for fundraising. As the city would not pay, it was bombarded and taken by the cantonalists. General Contreras, commanding officer of the cantonal fleet, ordered the march a reel to be played as he unbudded. Afterwards, the deed would be repeated in Alicante, but on the trip back to Cartagena they were captured as pirates by the armoured frigates HMS Swiftsure and SMS Friedrich Karl, under the UK and German flags respectively. An even worse problem was the Third Carlist War, in which the rebels controlled most of the Basque country, Navarre and Catalonia without opposition, and sent raid parties throughout the peninsula. The Carlist pretender, Charles VII, had formed a rival government in Estella with his own ministers and was already minting currency, while the French connivance allowed him to receive external aid and fortify his defences. Between the Carlists and the Cantonal Revolution, the actual territory in which the short-lived republic exerted undisputed authority did not extend much further than the province of Madrid itself and northwestern Spain, as Cantonal uprisings took place as far north as Avila. Due to the rapid pace of the events, and without time for the new constitution to be passed by the Cortes, Pio Margal found himself between a rock and the proverbial hard place of the cantonal revolution. However, 
the effective commander-in-chief of the Republic rejected all calls, from both military and political instances, to exert repression on the cantonal uprisings, as he argued they were just following his very own doctrine. Thus, he was forced to resign on July 18 after just 37 days in office. He would later sorely describe his experience as Premier. So many have my upsets with power been that I can no longer covet it. While in the government I have lost my calm, my illusions, my trust in fellow men which was the base of my character. For each grateful man, a hundred ungratefuls. For each disinterested and patriotic one, hundreds that wanted from politics nothing more than the satisfaction of their whims. I have received bad for good. Drafting the Federal Constitution the draft of the Federal Constitution of the First Republic of Spain developed at length into 117 articles organized under 17 titles. In the first article, the following is found. Composing the Spanish nation the states of Andaluca a Alta, Andaluca a Baja, Araga Cuben, Asturias, Baleas, Canarias, Castilla la Nueva, Castilla la Vieja, Catalua plus or minus a, Cuba, Extremadura, Galicia, Mercia, Navarra, Puerto Rico, Valencia, regions Vas Canadas. The states will be able to conserve the actual provinces and modify them, according to their territorial necessities. These states would have complete economic administrative autonomy and political autonomy compatible with the existence of the nation such as the ability to give it a political constitution. The constitutional draft anticipated in title either euro in addition to the classic legislative power, executive power and judicial power a euro a fourth relational power that would be exercised by the President of the Republic. Legislative power would be in the hands of the Federal Cortes, which would be composed of the Congress and the Senate. Congress was to be a house of proportional representation with one representative for every 50,000 souls, renewing every two years. The Senate was to be a house of territorial representation, four senators being elected by the Cortes of each one of the states. Executive power would be exercised by the Ministry of Advisers, whose president would be elected by the President of the Republic. Article 40 of the draft stated, in the political organization of the Spanish nation, all things individual are the pure domain of the individual. All things municipal are that of the municipality. All things regional are that of the state. And all things national, of the federation. The following article declared that all powers are elective, revocable, and accountable, and Article 42 that sovereignty resides in all citizens, which they exercise by their own representation by the political organizations of the republic, constituted through universal suffrage. Judicial power would reside in the federal supreme court which would be composed of three magistrates for each state of the federation that would never be elected by the executive power or the legislative power. It also would establish that all courts would be professioning the judicial institution for all classes of representatives. Relational power would be exercised by the President of the Federal Republic whose mandate would last four years, not being immediately realizable, as says Article 81 of the draft. The government of Nicola S. Solmara Cubden, after accepting the resignation of Pi I. Margul, Nicola S. Solmara Cubden was elected president of the executive power, with 119 votes in favor and 93 votes against. The new president, who was a moderate Federalist Republican, defended the necessity of arriving at an understanding with the more moderate or conservative groups and a slow transition toward a federal republic. His oratory was crashing. Francisco Silvala said that in his speeches, Solmara Cubden only used one weapon a Euro artillery. Antonio Mora characterized the professorial tone of Don Nicola S., saying that it always seemed that he was addressing the metaphysicists of Albast. Already during his stints as Minister of Mercy and Justice in the government of Estanislao Figueras, he brought about the abolition of the death penalty, even the independence of judicial power in the face of the political. His nomination produced an intensification of the cantonal movement, which to control he had to resort to generals openly against the Federal Republic, sending military expeditions to Andaluque and Valencia under the respective command of generals Pavoe and Martinez Campos. One after another the separate cantons were subdued, except that of Cartagena, which resisted until January 12, 1874. 
his generals asked the awareness of the government and his signature to execute various death sentences on various deserting soldiers on the Carlist front. According to them, this was essential to re-establishing discipline on the army. Somera Kubden, man of very advanced liberal principles, declined to concede the awareness, and, as is written on the wall of his mausoleum, abandoned power to not sign a death sentence. In this way, he resigned on September 6. The government of Emilio Castler, the next day, September 7, the man elected to occupy the presidency of the executive power was Unitarian Emilio Castler, professor of history and distinguished orator, by 133 votes in favor against the 67 obtained by Pi I. Margul. During his previous time as Minister of State in the government of Estanislao Figueres, Castler promoted and achieved the approval of the abolition of slavery in the overseas territory of Puerto Rico, although not in Cuba because of the continuing war situation. This act by the First Spanish Republic is commemorated in Puerto Rico up to the present day. Motivated by the difficult situation through which the Republic was passing, with the aggravation of the Carlist War, Emilio Castler commenced the reorganization of the army, announcing before the Cortes to sustain this form of government, I need much infantry, much cavalry, much artillery, much civil guard, and many riflemen. In spite of the Federalist opposition, the Cortes conceded to him extraordinary powers to govern, after which they closed the Cortes on September 20. He confirmed the death sentences that provoked the resignation of his predecessor, re-established order, and was at the point of surrendering to the cantonalists of Cartagena. Without doubt, the chaos incited by the cantonal revolt and the worsening of the Carlist War led them to reopen the Cortes on January 2, 1874, in order to bring to a vote the management and ask for unlimited powers with which to save the Republic from complete discredit. In effect, the Cortes session opened on January 2, 1874, but the Federalists rose up against Don Emilio Castler, who was supported by the Captain General of Madrid, Don Manuel Pavela, former supporter of Prim, with whom he had rebelled in Villarejo de Silvana copyright s. Two very different forces threatened to interrupt the deliberations of the Cortes, the Federalists, eager to finish Castler with mighty wrath, and the troops of General Pavia, supporter of Castler, who had decided to show up in his support to avoid his defeat before the Federalists. The committed regiments had already left at the Captain General's orders when the Cortes recognized Castler's defeat by 119 votes against 101. The former President of the Republic, and the president of the Cortes, Nicola S. Somera Cubden, called for a new vote to elect a new chief of the executive power. Pavel situated himself in front of the building with his staff and ordered two adjutants to impose upon Somera Cubden the dissolution of the Cortes session and the evacuation of the building in five minutes. The civil guard, which guarded the Congress, put into action the general's orders and occupied the halls of Congress. It was 6.55 in the morning, when the vote to elect the Federalist candidate Eduardo Palance was proceeding, and Somera Cubden, upon receiving the Captain General's order, suspended the vote and communicated the grave situation to the representatives. The representatives abandoned the building with all speed, amidst scenes of exaggerated hysterics. Some even threw themselves out the windows. Pavela, surprised, asked, But gentlemen, why jump out the windows when you can leave through the door? Pavela, who was a Unitarian Republican, offered to allow Emilio Castler to continue in the presidency, but he refused, not wanting to maintain power through undemocratic means. These acts signified the unofficial end of the First Republic, although it officially continued for almost a year. The Unitary Republic, at the same time as the political convulsions were taking place, General La Cubed Pez Dorman was entered into Cartagena on January 12, replacing Martinez Campos, while Antoinette Gar Lvez, with more than a thousand men, struggled to elude him near the border of Numancia and set course for Aura N. The end of the cantonal experience was marked by Gar Lvez with his exile, but the Bourbon restoration permitted him through amnesty to return to his native Toriga one quarter era. In this period he would strike up a strange and warm friendship with Don Antonio Car Novas del Castillo, most responsible for the restoration, who considered Gar Lvez as sincere, 
honorable, and valiant man, although one of exaggerated political ideas. Meanwhile, after Emilio Castro's refusal to continue as president, he put General Serrano, recently returned from his exile in Biarritz for his implication in the attempted coup of April 23, in charge of the formation of a coalition government that grouped together monarchists, conservatives, and Unitarian Republicans, but excluded Federalist Republicans. Francisco Serrano, Duke of Tor, 63 years old, former collaborator of Isabel Du, had already twice freed the leadership of the state. He proclaimed the Unitary Republic, taking control of the presidency of the executive power, and dispensing with the Cortes in a conservative Republican dictatorship. During his mandate he once and for all subdued the cantonal insurrections, and that of Cartagena, and concentrated his forces on the Carlist War in the north of Spain. The general attempted without success to consolidate power to himself in dictatorship form, following the example of the regime of dukes and generals that prevailed in France upon the fall of Napoleon III and after the defeat of the Paris Commune. In just a few months, on May 13, Serrano ceded the presidency of the government to Juan de Zivla y de la Puente to personally take control of the operations against the Carlists in the north. Prague Seeds Mateo Sagast took charge of the government on September 3. On December 10 the siege of Pamplona began, but it was interrupted by the proclamation of Sagantu. The end of the Republic, on December 29, 1874 in Sagantu, General Martinez Campos came out in favor of the restoration to the throne of the Bourbon monarchy in the personage of Don Alfonso de Bourbacubden, son of Isabel du. The government of Sagasta did not oppose this announcement, permitting the restoration of the monarchy. The triumph of the Bourbon restoration succeeded thanks to the previous work of Antonio Carnovas del Castillo, which without a doubt was contrary to military rule. Until 1931, the Spanish Republicans celebrated the 11th February anniversary of the First Republic. Thereafter, the commemoration was moved to April 14 the anniversary of the proclamation of the Second Republic in 1931. See also, Second Spanish Republic, Coat of Arms of the Second Spanish Republic. References Further reading, Brandt Joseph A. Toward the New Spain, the Spanish Revolution of 1868 and the First Republic, Carr, Raymond, ed. Spain, A History. External links, Historia Antica. Primera Republica.